this is what I'm working with. This is a granny square. It's not laid on the granny square. It's part of it. I love the look of it. As it is right now, it could be a nice throw pillow. It's a little over 20 inches, about 20 and a half inches in uh, square right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go another full step like I did here on this over square here. Now, any of you who have made granny squares, here it is. Just start just a regular granny square. You go out as many layers as you want. Um, for this one, I did five colors and I did two rows for each color. I gave me 10 rows from the center out. And I just repeating that outside. On the corner here, on the edge here, I did a granny, I did a slip stitch along the edge, and that's what I connected the outside to. Now, if you look at the outside, uh, the, I don't know what you call it, cornered granny, uh, outside transverse granny, I don't know. I haven't decided on a name yet. I'm going to call it a granny. <laughs> In a granny or maybe granny diamonds and squares oh, that's a good one diamond and square granny anyway um i started out making this i got the four four sides made and i realized i had made a humongous mistake i had used these holes here the location of these holes to make my connections for the other rows but that doesn't work these, the height of these is different from the width of these. So four going up this way actually equals the same as three of these groups. And if I try to do that, I end up stretching this out until it starts to bunch up on the edges. And I end up with something more like a, a square bowl instead of a nice flat granny. So... This is how you do it. I'm going to try, I wanted to take this a little farther. I'm going to see if I can get it big enough to be a lap gan. If I have enough of the right color yarn, I might be able to get it to be as big as a, something for a twin size bed. I'm using an H hook. I'm going to come in a little closer. The only problem with getting closer is I forget where I put my hands and I end up <clears throat> getting out of the picture, so I'm going to have to watch that. This is the absolute center here. And this slip stitch is going to be the center of my side. So, right there. So what I want to do is I want to come up two stitches skip two stitches and go to the third stitch and I'm going to put my yarn in there because I have to have an anchor for the edges it's going to be my anchor point Okay, so I'm going to do a single crochet and then I'm going to do, come back down two stitches to the third stitch, which is over this. And I'm going to make my two double crochet hook groups with um, chain two in between. Now, strictly speaking, this isn't a two-sided um, operation for the simple reason that it's really hard to get the backs of these connections, these color connections, to
to look the same as the front. You have to figure out which one you want to sacrifice. Then you make it look as good as you can so at least it's not obvious. Now here's my two here. I'm going to need to make another anchor over here. And I need to go up a square. So what I want to do is I want to chain one. That'll be where my next bunch will be, that chain one space. Skip two stitches. Go into the third stitch. Slip stitch into it. See, here's my space for my next grouping. Then I'm going to chain two. Skip two stitches again. And go into this third stitch and do a single crochet. Now what I've done here is I've made the next place that the next color loop is going to go. Then I have to turn the work over. Now I come back down into this place that I prepared, this chain one space, and I finish out this group. Because this chain, chain two that I used for the bridge becomes the first um, double crochet in that cluster. Okay. Here's my cluster. And there's a space for the next cluster that comes after it. I come over to the middle. And do my two clusters in chain two. And I'm on my way. Now since I'm doing two rows every set, and I'd like them to look kind of uniform. I always start on the front with the first set, with the, uh, the first of each color set. This is the back here. This is the front. On the way back, you're working on the back. And you're also raising a ridge on the front. But you always get that ridge when you go back and forth, uh, flip sides on a granny. But in this case, it looks nice because that ridge is going to be the same spot in every color all the way up. Now, when you come to the end over here, all you want to do is anchor it. But you have to leave a chain one space so that you can put your next color in it. Over here, we wanted to come back and start this, so we made it we made a single crochet here. On the anchor side, when we're finished with it, we want to come down and just make a slip stitch. So we have to make the chain one first. You'll get the hang of it. You'll get so you know automatically whether you're supposed to make a chain one or a single crochet. Now we go down two stitches, go into the third. Now look, I'm in the back. And I want the any any inequities to be in the back and not in the front. So I'm going to skip these two and I'm going to come in from the front. And finish my single crochet that way. Okay. Here's the front. Let go. And here's the back. You see more of the connections on the back. And that's where you want all your, um, any kind of connection that's going to show, that's where you want it. You want it all in the back. So what I'm going to do, maybe a knot, okay. I'll pull this through like that. And I'm going to let these come down the back so I can see that this is the back. When I, on each side, I'll do this 
one end to the other so that these tails are out of the way. But they show me clearly which side I'm on because trust me, after you get going, you'll forget which side you're on and you'll turn it around and say, oh no, I've got a boo-boo on the front. Okay, I take the next color and give me one to turn over to the front. So here's where the connection is. You come up two stitches, go into the third. Bomb hook. Chain one, because you want to have uh, some place for the next next group to anchor to, and come down and do your three doubles for your granny cluster. And you chain one between all of your clusters. Just like that. When we come over here, we go into this chain one space to make our cluster. Skip two stitches. And since we're coming down and we're going to be going out to anchor again, we're going to do what we did over here. We're going to do our cluster here. We're going to anchor here and then do a single crochet up for the next color and come down. I'll show you again. You know, I was hoping to make one of these small enough that it could be used like regular granny squares. Whew, you gotta go awfully small. And it's only so small you can go with worsted. Um, I tried using an F hook and double crochets, and I got down to around a six inch square before I start the triangles, you know, the triangle corners. And that would still make a pretty big granny square when it's done. It'd be like about probably 13 inches. 12 inches, something like that. So I tried doing uh, half doubles with an F hook and came down a little bit smaller. But I think I'd have to go down the thread to get the size I was looking for. Okay, I came down here and I made my uh, last cluster chain one because this isn't the end of the line you got to come up again this is the stitch i went into skip two stitches come into the third come on baby uh -uh. i was very tight when i did this i can tell <sighs> one two So I do a single crochet and that'll give me okay strike that reverse it that's what I get for getting frustrated on the coming down you chain one Chain one. Skip two stitches. Go in and anchor with the slip stitch. Chain two. Skip two stitches. And now we make a single crochet. Because that will make the hole we need for the next color. 
and turn. And then we finish out that group with two more double crochets. Chain one and on to the next. Okay. So here's my back. I'll be coming up here. When I come down over here, make my last cluster here, and then I chain one, skip two, and anchor, and tie off the thread, and I'm ready for the next color. When you're turning around, that's when you have to, um, when, you, when you're turning around to go back up, that's when you have to do a single crochet in the end. So when you're turning the same color to go the other direction, that's the only time you put a single crochet here. The rest of the time you can just you chain one and then slip stitch because you're going to come turn right around and use that chain one for your grouping. But down here, you're not coming back to here. The next color has to come back here and it has to have a place to anchor. So that's when you do your chain, your uh, single crochet. On this side, you do your grouping and you're finished with that color. So you skip your two stitches, chain one, because you're not coming back, chain one and slip stitch into this and cut it off. Then you have your chain one space for your next group on this side and you have your single crochet on this side for your next grouping. So every end will either have a single crochet or a chain one. And that's how it goes across the whole thing. As you can see, the front looks really nice. And we've got to start on our next triangles coming up off of this one. Now, this will be done completely to purple before it gets to the edges. And probably enough for probably for the light blue and the dark blue and then it'll have the multi the dark navy and the purple on the outside here so it's going to be a pretty good size it'll probably be around I think I figured out it should be around 35 inches it's 20 and a half right now but with the ex with the uh, extra um, corners added on to the side it's going to be about 35 inches uh, corner to corner and if I go up straight from there and down straight. I can make it as long as I want to. I can make it for a twin bed or a afghan or a couch throw or whatever. So that is the um, key to making the granny square within the granny square. The diamond in the square. Okay, thank you. Happy cooking.